This is the third iteration of my Orbit series, modeled and animated in Cinema 4D, rendered out in Octane. Let's just get started. The Orbit series typically involves, obviously, a smaller object revolving around the focal point of the scene. Uh, usually the focal point is a product or a piece of furniture, and in this case I've used a chair. I also love incorporating architectural elements in a scene, so columns, pillars, doorways, staircases, whatever it may be. This really helps me play with the scale of a scene as well as how to highlight the product using spatial awareness. Before I even begin modeling, I always have my references ready to go. So lighting, materials, composition, overall aesthetic, the mood of the scene, uh, material combinations, visual balance, whatever it may be. This really helps me stay on track because I'm someone that can lose sight of what my original aim was, so I always refer back to my references during the design process. Once I have a fresh file open, I will start modeling the primary visual elements of the scene. So this is typically the large architectural elements as well as the product itself. I kind of call this phase the cooking phase. So I'm always playing around with different camera angles, compositions, seeing what I like. Also adding in more modeling elements that help frame the subject of the camera. As you can see, the first things I started off with was the floor the chair model as well as the cylindrical disc underneath the chair. Once I have my basic modeling and blocking laid out as well as a camera angle I'm happy with, I will start adding the basic dynamics of my scene. This is where I started animating my sphere along the circular path. I used an align to spline tag, uh, then keyframed the position from 0% to 100%. Once I've added some basic dynamics, I will continue to add some modeling details. The first thing I added was the tube cutout in the floor. So what I did was I grabbed my floor, which was in a cloner, put that inside a boolean, and then I grabbed a tube from the primitive objects menu, made sure it was the same radius as my path, chucked that underneath my cloner floor in the boolean, and then it made a nice cutout that sort of framed the animation of the sphere. A workflow tip that I always use in all of my scenes is creating a backup null that is hidden from the viewport and the renderer. I use this null to chuck in modeling objects that I want to keep the original form of without losing progress. This way I can just make a copy, chuck that into my backup null and now play around with this copy that I've made. This lets me bake down objects, animate it, put it into a volume builder without losing any progress and this way I don't have to keep incrementally saving my file and taking up a bunch of hard drive space. I also ended up deciding to change my orbit path to be from flat to have different elevations. So all I did was make my spline editable, made sure it had uniform subdivisions and then pulled up some points of the uh, spline path. I also tried out a few different techniques with the floor cutout. So I brought up the tube and then started keyframing the rotation of it to have some dynamic intersections. It ended up not looking really good, but this is just a common part of the design process. I'm always slowly adding some detail to the model as well. So with the disc plate underneath the chair, I created a nice little shadow gap and a nice cutout so that it would be flush with the floor. After that, I went back into my dynamics and started to adjust the keyframes of my spline path animation. I wanted the sphere to kind of accelerate as it went down the path and then slow down as it went back up to kind of loosely simulate physics. All I had to do was play around with the keyframes using the row of icons in the top bar and you just kind of play with the handles until the curves kind of match the movement that you're after. Now we can get into the fun part of the process, for me at least, which is the lighting. I already kind of had an idea of what lighting I wanted in the scene based on the references I collected. I knew I would have to play with the distribution within the Octane light tag. In this distribution, I ended up using a Grayscale Gorilla animated gobo. It was a very simple setup. I really only have one light and then later on in the video, I'll show you the other couple lights I added into the scene. Also, quick shout out to Grayscale Gorilla. I am new to Octane, so using their tutorials for animated gobos was super helpful. Once I was happy with where the lighting was at for now, I started adding some more modeling details to the sphere. So I did a hole punch cutout because it is traveling along a pipe. 
All I did was chuck the sphere into a booling, put a cylinder underneath it, made the cutout a little bigger than the pipe itself, remeshed it and then beveled the edges. One thing I forgot to mention earlier is make sure you have tangential checked in your align to spline tag because that means your object will actually follow the contour of the path that you placed. Also make sure as you reach little checkpoints in your design process that you organize the scene a little bit that way you don't have to constantly do a massive cleanup at the end. The next modeling details I added were the plan to cutouts. I knew I wanted to incorporate foliage somehow in this scene because I was kind of after like a calming zen sort of aesthetic. Another workflow tip that I use on every project is listing out everything that needs to be modeled in the scene. You can get really minute with the details, so beveling the edge of the doorway, beveling the floor, add the hole punch cutout to this object, model in the chair, have a table, have a side table, put two props on the table. Offloading as much of this information in your brain onto a page will let you marinate creative ideas a bit more effectively, as well as help you keep momentum when designing a scene. With the materials, I always make sure to refer back to my color palette. I tend to think of the colors in my scene as my main colors, my supporting colors, and then my accent colors. So this helps me choose materials based on architectural elements, or whether it's a prop, or whether it's the product itself. The main textures I used for this scene were from Polygon, so the terrazzo, the semi-metallic blue, as well as the chair material, which was like a fine wool. In the Octane node editor, the main uh, nodes that I used for adjusting and tweaking these materials was the composite texture node, which helped me layer different textures and choose the blend modes. And the second node was the color correct node, which helped me play with the hue and saturation of different textures, as well as adjusting the roughness values using the gamma slider. You can see I iterate through quite a few materials and this is where my references help. So originally I was trying this metallic sort of circular scratchy material for the floor uh, and then I ended up changing it to the blue later on because I was looking back at my references and then told myself no, this was not part of your original theme, stick to the plan. I also initially made the chair a blue color, ended up changing it to a brown because I made one of the pillows brown and then did not like the two-tone look and then I was like well I may as well just try to make the whole thing brown because the blue felt a bit too much at the time so I was really happy with how it ended up. And then finally I knew the sphere would be a fine grain wood and I thought matching the browns and reds of that with the chair ended up being a really good color combination. I also ended up adding the plants finally and this was from some older 3ds max corona scene. So I imported those as an FBX and then obviously this meant I had to rebuild the materials from scratch in Octane. Uh, this was actually a good learning process I found because like I mentioned earlier I'm quite new to Octane so this was pretty fun to get used to the material editor, how to layer different materials, how translucency works and all the things like that. Once I'm happy with where the materials are at, I'll do a final pass over of the lighting in the scene. So I knew I wanted this to be sort of like an open roof, semi outdoorsy type of lighting. So I added an HDRI to the scene just to incorporate and introduce some more bluish and cooler tones to the shadows. The next light I added was a soft fill light in the top left of the screen or of the image. Uh, this was kind of to help separate the plant from the background and act as a soft rim light just so it wouldn't blend in with the shadows too much. Also quickly, I turned off the specular visibility in the octane tag of my fill light just because I didn't want some massive white specular highlight showing in the final render. So lastly, the output and render settings. The resolution was 2000 by 2500, which was a 9 by 16 portrait ratio for Instagram. I had a max samples of 256 and a minimum samples of 64 underneath the adaptive sampling section. Uh, and my error threshold was 0.3. I know this might seem like it'll output quite a noisy image, but I did have my denoiser enabled in the Octane camera tag. I also did a lot of AB comparison and I found that this gave me really good results for a really good render time. I think each frame came out to be around 50 seconds. So uh, that actually meant I could go to the gym, render out the six second clip at 30 FPS and then come back and it would be done in about two and a half hours. 
So like I mentioned, I had my denoiser enabled in the camera tag and I also had aces enabled in the octane settings as well as the camera itself. As for post-production, I did put this clip through an AI processor just to double the length from 6 seconds to 12 seconds. The main reason I did this was just to slow down the animation of the sphere a bit because I was after that calming zen type of aesthetic for this piece. I also did a bit of colour tweaking in DaVinci Resolve, just really the contrast, the gamma and the gain very slightly, uh, but I tried to do most of my work in 3D. So that was my workflow for Orbit03, the other two versions can be found in the description below underneath that like button. Let me know what you think of this video format, did I explain things enough, was I a bit too fast, was it helpful, let me know your feedback and I'm happy to answer any questions in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, I'll see you in the next one, peace.